myself. Um, hey, Jen, I see that you're here. I'm going to, there she is. Hey, sorry. Hi, Jen. That's okay. okay Guys, but... um, I just want to introduce Jen and then I'll pass it to her. But Jen, I've already told them that you've got to hop off early and why, and I'll let you talk more about that. But um, I do want to say this. If you're on this call, you're on Jen's team. And it was her story actually back in 2014. I think I watched one of her videos and then I heard her speak at a triple diamond event and I saw myself in her story and it's what motivated me to work the business. So without further ado, I will pass it off to you, Jen. Hey, thanks, Becky. Um, appreciate that. So you want me to share my story? Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll try to be brief because I see a lot of familiar names and you've probably seen it. So um, I just celebrated 11 years in May. And when I came across Plexus in my newsfeed, I wasn't interested in the business. I was really only interested in the products to help me lose baby weight. Um, but we were on a very tight budget, Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University. And my husband said, two months, I'll give you two months. After that, you have to break even. Well, I fell in love with the products um, right away, had lost 10 pounds in the first few weeks. Um, and so I knew I had to take the products long term. So like really nervous because I was never going to be that girl. I was looking for something to do to supplement our family's income from home. And so um, but network marketing was never going to be the thing that was going to allow me to be a stay at home mom. So I thought, OK, but. I can at least make enough to cover the cost of my products. So I started sharing. And when that first paycheck came in, it was just under $500. That's when I knew that this was going to be the way I could be a stay-at-home mom. So I was all in at that point. I had no idea what I was doing. I absolutely knew that I was not a fan of this. And I didn't want to be that girl. I did not want to be that girl. But when I could see that everybody needed these products and in, in my, but I had this limited limiting belief in my, in my head that was like, all of my friends are pretty healthy. I was stuck in the weight loss thing. They don't really need to lose weight. They're pretty fit. I, I don't think that I'm going to be able to be successful, but maybe I can get enough people to at least keep taking the products and offset the cost. Well, I was completely wrong. My network was full of people just like me that wanted to lose 10 pounds and wanted mama energy. And so that is how my business exploded. So um, I, I had to get out of that thought of prejudging who would be interested in these products. And then it was all about gut health from there. So um, just, just being able to actually get to root cause. And you guys know that and how that's what we do more of now, other than just losing that, that last 10 pounds and stuff. So this blessing that the, the Plexus business has been a blessing in a gazillion ways. It's more than financial. It's more than time freedom. It's the community, it's purpose. It's being able to have an impact in people's lives and, and really having what John Maxwell talks about is, of being uh, of sig significance. So I'm so thankful for Plexus and I'm thankful for um, all of the blessings in all the ways. Um, but that's it in a nutshell. But I do have this and I'm on a time frame. So I'm talking really fast because I want to get to some of this stuff. Um, I'm loving seeing some so many familiar names here. Um, so I, I know I'll probably not share anything brand new for you, but I'm hoping that you'll walk away with something that is like, yes, I forgot about that. I forgot that. And that is where I'm struggling right now and where I need to um, focus in my business. So I label, I, I named this training for you today, like Jen's most valuable lessons, like MBLs, I guess, um, for today, just things that I have really like when that have risen to the top of things that I think are really just the most valuable things that people need to know and understand as they are doing this business. And I'm going to wrap it up at the end with a question that says, where, what area do you feel like you need to work on the most? And so just kind of be thinking about that um, as you listen. So the first thing is um, activity and personal growth are the lifeblood to your business. When I first started this business, I um, heard Sarah Robbins say, the cure to what ails your business is activity. And so that has, has always 
stuck with me, but I've also experienced it when I have felt stuck and I have felt basically like insecure. Like I am like stinking at what I do. It's because I am not in my personal activity doing the things I need to do. As soon as I get into activity, whether or not there's production or not, I feel better. I want to show up in my business. It's like, it's like the chicken and the egg thing, right? Like I just, you, I, and I, I see, you know what I'm talking about when you actually get in and do the work, whether or not you get a customer that day anyways, and it comes to fruition, you feel better and you can keep showing up for your business. The other thing that like Sarah Robbins didn't say personal growth is the cure to what ails your business, but I kind of added that in because, um, it's, 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 it's part of, even if you are doing the personal growth, it's also that egg thing. So activity and the personal growth piece together is what will give you the confidence to keep showing up in your business. And we've heard before, you can't give what you don't have. So you have to be continually filling your tank. Um, and the, and whenever, so I'm going to move to in the, these two things, they're the price. So if they're the lifeblood of your business, they also have to be, when it comes to your business, prior, prior priorities, and you have to schedule your priorities. Like I know that you're busy and you've got, oh, you're wearing a lot of hats, but if you don't schedule those priorities, your life will overflow into that and you won't get them done. Um, so I read this. I don't know. I think it's probably John Maxwell, but I had written it down in some of my notes somewhere, but it says the things that matter most should never be at the mercy of what matters the least. So this is what happens in our day-to-day business when we don't schedule and show up with a plan. So scheduling it and showing up with a plan. So like the personal growth thing, I will just kind of, I'm not going to go much into, but we all know, especially if you've been around a while, you can do the personal growth thing in those nooks and crannies. Now, ideally, you're going to sit down with the book. You're going to take notes. You're going to process. You're going to think about. You're going to reflect. You're going to journal. You're going to think, how can I implement what I'm learning? That's the most ideal way. And when you can do that, do it. But uh, the realistic way that most of us can do personal growth is listening to a podcast in the car from point A to point B while we're folding laundry. So make use of that time to like that time's going to pass anyway, going from point A to point B from, from folding laundry, instead of maybe jamming out to your favorite, like music, why not be feeding your, your mind with things that will help you grow your business forward and help you grow as a person and as a leader. Okay. Um, two of my personal growth faves, uh, there's so many out there, but the two that I feel like have been the most impactful for me, I will say, and I've talked about it before it's, um, John Maxwell's 25 ways to win with people. This really changed things for me. Um, A a few, and I wish I had had this when I was a teenager, honestly, to start developing these skills, because this is all about how you are able to grow your influence with people. The tagline is how to make others feel like a million bucks. I mean, if you can make others feel like a million bucks, you will have influence in your life. And And this is goes in all areas of your life as being a parent, um, whatever other job you have in your plexus, all areas of life. If you can make people drawn to you, then you will be successful in whatever, um, you set out to do. But this book, you can see it's, I don't know if you can see how doggy eared and mar- marked up it is, but it has been a, a game changer for me. So I would say that I've listened to the audio at least also like I try probably listen to about one, at least every year I've listened to it since I discovered it. And I like to listen to it as well. Um, Before I'm going into situations where I'm going to be with a lot of people, it's just good reminders. These are skills that we can develop to grow in our influence level. It's not a thing like, oh, she just has it. She just has a way with people. It's not that way. I mean, maybe some of us have a, have a more natural in- inclination, but it could just be like who our parents are and we watch them and we know, but a- every single one of us can develop these skills. I don't care who you are or what your upbringing is. You can raise your skills in that area. The other book is Atomic Habits. I know you know it, but those two, I feel like have been the most impactful for me personally when it comes to my personal growth and development. 
Okay. So when it comes to activity, so personal growth and activity, when it comes to activity, a plan is crucial because that will your mindless scrolling, because most of our business is on social media. It's like literally opening the biggest a weapon of mass distraction as you go into work, your business. I mean, like it, it's, it's like, how are we supposed to not let it distract us and then take away that 30 minutes of time that we had to work our business. The way you do it is with a plan, a very specific plan. I don't know if you're a checklist kind of person, but make your checklist, have your IPA list, but things that you need to make sure, like I'll just really quick go through, um, following up with your potentials. Um, this is something that I think that we've forgotten and we haven't talked about a, a, a lot lately is making sure you have a friends list. And um, I have my potentials in a favorites list on Facebook so that when I open up and I'm like right now, my, this for the next five minutes, I'm going to engage with my potentials. I'm going to warm up that algorithm so that when I make a Plexus post here in a little bit, they're more likely to see it. Okay. So that's going to be the first thing I'm going to do. But if I go in and I'm now, I'm like, oh, now I'm scrolling and I'm saying, oh, I'd love, I, oh, that's a really cool lip gloss. I want to, I want to buy that, you know, then you're like done, right? So go in and you, and you've created all your potentials are favorited. And, and I think it limits how many favorites you can have, but you should be like, I just like looked at mine this morning and I have, I had, I needed to refresh it. I have three people on there that are, are, that have joined my team. So I'm like, while I still want to see their stuff, I need to be more intentional in engaging with the other people that I want to see my stuff. So that's something that we used to do and we talk about, but I, I feel like it's been kind of forgotten. It's just an easy thing that we can be doing as far, as far as our activity and you isolate that newsfeed of just those people and you can engage really quick. But, um, then obviously new VIP customers, check-ins and follow-up, like helping them move their health journey forward, having them have a great experience, planting the seeds of belief, um, Becky told you why I have to um, jump off early is because we're bringing back our real people, real stories, replays at 1230 central. So you have two opportunities a week that you can invite people to testimonial calls, either the Thursday night live or the 12. Now today's the first day we're bringing back the replay at 1230 central where you can invite people in and it helps them build, build their belief. Um, Andrea is on here, uh, Becky, you know, like some of us who've been around a while, we remember the Wednesday night calls where we would dial in. They weren't recorded. You'd put it on speakerphone. Yes. Erin's shaking her head. She knows you'd be cooking dinner. You'd be doing the things and you would listen to these calls. And it wasn't sure you were inviting people, but you were building your own belief. Like that was, it was that season of listening to those calls that my feet got firmly planted in plexus. Like I rock solid because of those early foundational, um, you know, months of in months and months and months of listening and tuning into those calls. So that's what we're trying to do with real people, real stories is provide a way for all of you to solidify and understand what we have in plexus by building your belief and then having a way to invite people, other people in to build their belief and make a decision for plexus. So um, those, those check-ins and building the, those seeds of belief, then the team page engagement. If you are on a team page or if you lead a team page, being connected to your community, whether you're a team leader or you are in there in the community is a really um, important piece too, because it's the community, it's the connection, it's the culture. Uh, I feel like culture trumps, um, strategy or eat culture, eat strategy for lunch or something like that. So being a part of the culture is a really important piece to, of your activity. Um, okay. So let me move on in the essence of time. Okay. The, the other thing that I have learned is keeping it simple. Whenever I've gone in and tried to make things complicated with lots of different things and steps and resources and stuff, people shut down. So whenever, so if we can just keep it simple by sharing, helping people have a great product experience, um, 
helping them build their belief and then casting that vision. That's what we did in the beginning that we were getting this like amazing momentum. That's what we did. We kept it simple. None of us knew what we were doing. We just kept it simple and really like just focusing on those main things. Right. Um, believe me. And I made lots of mistakes along the way, trying things and being like, yep, that didn't work. That didn't work either. Oh no, that, so it's okay to try things, but if we can just keep it simple, it's going, um, just keep it simple, stupid. Okay. Um, understanding that the next thing is understanding some will, some won't, and some of it is kind of, so what, but it's okay. Not everybody sees it. Not everybody's going to do it. Even the people that you bring in and you have on your team, there's going to be people that are always going to complain. They're always going to be negative. There's always going to be some woe excuse. And you know what? Like, I love those people, but I'm not spending my time and my energy on them. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go and invest and be strategically intentional with either with even, even like those people are prospects. And when I, whenever prospects are showing their cards and that's, those are the kind of people they are, I'm literally like, let me know when you're, you're ready to commit and I, and I'm, and I'll help you get on these products and, and get healthy. I'll, I'll help you, but I'm moving on. Like, no, you don't drag people along. You don't move. So that is another huge lesson I, I learned. I used to just want to like, no, everybody, like everybody's got to come. We've No, like you get your people who are willing to put in the effort, the time they're going to be positive. They're going to have the right attitude. And these are the people I'm spending the most of my time with. Okay. And energy. Okay. Last thing. Um, pay attention to the voices in your head. Um, Jessica Hefley is like the, I love what she teaches about this, but, um, just in our jewel session, most recently, um, that thoughts create feelings, but feelings aren't facts. They're an invitation to explore, but they aren't facts. And we have, um, and, and we will go our, our actual reality will go where our thoughts lead us. So it's so vital that we take our thoughts captive there's an, an enemy that's after our souls, but if he can't get our souls, he's going to get, try to destroy us through deception, through lies. So we have to recognize these lies as they're coming in our head, because we will follow if we, if we make an agreement with that, whatever the lie is, then it's a feeling, then it's an action. And then we've like created this cycle of this self-fulfilling prophecy I'm sure that Becky's already been all over this with you guys, but I just, I had to have it in there because it is literally one of my most valuable lessons that I have learned and taking those thoughts captive. Okay. Um, all right. So in summary, um, wh where do you need, what is your thing that you feel like I, I need, I need to be better about my consistent activity you know, I'm really good at intense bursts of activity, but I need to be more consistent, whether it, even if it's just 20 minutes a day versus two hours a day, two hours um, every two weeks or whatever it is like, where, what is it? Is it scheduling? Is it um, investing the right time and energy into the right people? Um, is it this mindset? Are you believing lies and they're creating this cycle of creating your reality because you're, you are grabbing on and agreeing with these lies. Um, is it growing an influence? Is it, do you need to take a few of these little skills and just really start getting good at that? Um, maybe you're thinking, you know what, you covered a handful of things that I need to focus on that I need to do. I would just encourage you to pick one, like, don't be like, I need to, I need work on almost everything she said. No, you can't just pick one at a time and just get good at that one thing. And then you can add another and then add another, add another. If you do too much, this is, I guess I'll wrap it up with this. If you do too much too soon, you literally shut down. You, you're like, I, it, it's overwhelming. I can't do all the things. So I just am going to do nothing. Okay. So just pick one. All right. <laughs> That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know that you've, I know that you're hosting 
the replay on your Zoom account. So you're going to have to jump, but I so appreciate you. Jen, tell them one thing you want them to know about the Thursday night live calls, the real people, real stories. Yeah. Um, so we create, and if, and if, and Becky and, and Andrea, you guys can get hold of the story graphics. If you will put those in your stories, we're, we don't want call details to be posted publicly because quite frankly, we aren't super, we're not censoring the calls. Okay. So like Dave shared, came and shared his testimony. It was awesome. You know, like, but we're not telling you, you know, so because of that, we have to be very protective of these calls. And so we want you to private message, privately invite, you can add the graphics that we have, have created to your stories create curiosity, open up conversations, invite people to these calls. We really are trying to keep them short, like 20 minutes. Sometimes they go to 25. Um, But you be on them personally to help you get that solid ground. And then um, inviting every VIP, every single person that uh, potentials, your new customers, you can be building belief with. even your old ambassadors, like that you've, that have fallen off, like invite and, sh- and you can share those graphics with them. So they get an idea of the stories that are going to be, that they're going to hear. And they see something, they see, oh, migraines. And you're like, oh yeah, I have that. Or I have a friend that has that. So um, I hope that's helpful, but hop on to just to even see what they're about. And again, Monday re- we replay the, the, so I'm about to replay Thursday night's call that has some of your greater community, I think, in there because uh, Roz Payne hosted that one. Awesome. Thank you, Jen. Thanks for being on. Thanks for sharing these, uh, your most valuable lessons. And then um, I know that you've got to go. I'll tell everyone else, if you want to stay on and do some question asking or maybe talk about one of these areas that Jen shared that you need to work on, we'll stick around for a little longer if You want to go watch the replay, you can go do that. You'll find the link at the table. Um, Thanks, Jen. We appreciate you. We love you. Love you too. Thanks, Felicia. Bye. Bye. Okay. So if you want to stick around for a minute, let's talk about, I'd love to have somebody unmute and share which one of these, I think she shared four different lessons which one of these do you need to work on the most and what's your biggest obstacle to doing so? I'll go <laughs> throw myself under the bus. <laughs> um, when she said, keep it simple, You know, I I think it just comes from my career in corporate America and doing presentations and just, you know, telling all the stuff. So I I know when I first started doing this, I would just kind of like show up and throw up. And uh, I'm I'm getting better at that, but that really spoke to me. Um, And I, I think what gets in the way, my biggest obstacle because I, I am learning to censor myself. I'm getting better at it. But I think the biggest obstacle is just myself because I start thinking, oh, I need to tell them this. I need to tell them this. And I don't need to tell them everything all at once. So that was the thing that spoke the most to me. I love that, Dave. What what areas of the business do you feel like you get into either verbal diarrhea or not keeping it simple. What, which is it, is it the business part? Is it product explanation? Um, is it training? I, th- I think it's probably, uh, cause it usually, the conversation usually starts because of the products. Um, you know, they've seen something or they've seen, you know, a before and after of mine or, you know, something. So it usually starts there and that's where I, uh, tend to like just start over telling or if I'm explaining you know how you know the process to you know um, follow the link and join I feel like I've got to share all these details so I have this thing going this mental acrobatics going on in my head all the time and I've just got to learn I just keep editing 
but it's very intentional for me. I have to be very intentional. I, I mean, I relate to that so much. Something that stuck with me recently, um, I was in a, a, a jewel meeting and somebody talked about how um, simple is what creates sales, uh, but that information can create friction, which slows everything down, right? And I will tell you um, that probably the dumbest thing I ever did in this business was become what people thought was a product guru. Um, and, and I learned how to explain the products in great scientific detail. And I still get people who are like, I love your videos. I wish you would do more. And I will tell you that I just retired myself of that about a year and a half ago because it almost killed my business because the people that I recruited non-verbally saw me non-verbally basically you know that I didn't come out and say you have to be a product guru I just positioned myself as one and over explaining the products and over explaining the science and so people thought well I can't do that and so nobody was promoting because they were comparing themselves to my information and it was the same way with the business I felt like I had to explain every little detail which we just were not made to have to need those details. In fact, what I've found is that if someone's telling me the details, I tune them out. Now, when I have to go find them out for myself, I grow. So I think you're so smart and so self-aware to catch how that, what you thought was gonna be necessary was actually killing it for you. Yeah. It's, it's an ongoing struggle. <laughs> Well, I don't think you're alone. I think probably a lot of other people are going through that. Um, I appreciate you sharing that too. And I love your connection to, hey, something that might've been beneficial to you in corporate America is not serving you in network marketing. That's a that's right. a big shift. Who else? Who else wants to model self-awareness? I will. Go for it. Okay. So I'm a sweaty mess. I just came back from the gym, but I'm going to come on camera here because Becky tells me to do it all the time. <laughs> so here's, here's something that she said that really spoke to me, like schedule your time, make a plan. I'm one of those that I'm guilty of when I decide I'm going to sit down and do my business, I open up my computer. And of course, the first thing that comes through is all my teammates, right? And, you know, our chats, hey, I just posted something or my new VIP just posted for the first time. Can y'all go give her some love? And all of a sudden, it's like my time that I was going to spend reaching out or doing something for my business ends up being spent helping my teammates. So as much as I want to help my team, and I do, and, and a couple of them are on right now, I, I have to be intentional about working my business because, you know, it's like I, I have time. I have certain time that I've allotted for. This is what I'm going to go on and I'm working my plexus. But if working my plexus is only helping other people, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing myself a disservice. So that really spoke to me. I'm going to be more intentional. Yeah. Who else? I'm just curious, who else can um, relate to Christy where you're maybe, I know for me, sometimes I like to follow the energy. Like I'll do it when I'm feeling really energized. Well, <laughs> I'm a mom, mom of three who works from home during summertime and that doesn't happen. So I'm curious who else is struggling with prioritizing and scheduling? Now I see that hand, Aaron Bibb. Do you want to talk about it at all? Yeah, that was um, my definite star schedule, show up and plan. I am um, a lot of you on here know I'm swim team president. We're on our last week of swim team, but it has just consumed so many hours. And Becky asked me at convention, like, well, why can you show up for that and not show up for your business? Like, <laughs> but it is true. It's so true. And I was like, because people are depending on me. And she was like, well, aren't people depending on you in your business? I know, Andrea, she went there. So it is so true. And um, I've already told them I will not be president again, but there, there's always going to be something in life. So I have to learn how to schedule and plan and show up. So um, yeah, that's my goal is to... I'm thinking that I really need to do it at night. I know some of my very, and, and I'm an Enneagram one, like you would think that this would be my thing, but 
it's like when things get too much, like I just kind of shut down and don't want to do anything. So, um, but I need to plan it at night. Like, who am I going to reach out to who? And I loved how she said, just do one thing, just do one thing. So thanks for that tough love. Love I'm curious how many people's one thing is doing something for somebody else instead of doing something for your business. Cause I thought Christy's wisdom of I could get on and do stuff for my team. How many of y'all would rather or find yourselves going, I'm going to help my team. I'm going to, I'm going to be here if my team has questions. I want to, I want to be here for Andrea and Becky's call, but I don't want to host my own. I want to show up for the power hour, but I just hope it's when my team shows up for the power hour. I'm actually not going to do my own business or I'm going to follow up with all the people I've already started, you know, that I've already recruited all my current VIP customers, all my current brand ambassadors, but going out and getting new people. Yeah. I'm not, I'm going to put that at the end of my list. I just wonder how many of y'all or actually shift and prioritize your actual growth of your business. Your paycheck is actually bringing in new VIP customers and new and developing new brand ambassadors. It's not making sure that your, you know, five-year-old customer still likes their ProBio 5. Like priority-wise, I'm not saying this isn't important. I'm saying priority-wise, how many of y'all are saying, oh, the one thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to check on my team. If I could challenge you of anything today, the one and only plexus thing you need to do when we get off this call is actually grow your team with new people. And that new people may just be a new sleep customer. It may just be a new triplex customer. It may be getting their subscription, you know, for next month, adding their, you know, cucumber melon or whatever, but growing your business is actually why you're showing up for an hour on a Monday morning in the summer when it's a million degrees outside with us. It's not because you need like how many of y'all are not asking yourselves the hard questions or not doing the hard things, or you're telling yourself I'm too overwhelmed. Life is too hard. It's the summer kids are home. I can't do it. I just, I can't do it in my season. I promise you, if you can listen to this call, you can do the hard thing of growing your business. And I just want to like, that's my challenge to myself is to stop investing in y'all and actually go invest in my business. But it's not because I'm not going to show up on these calls. I'm going to show up for that hour. But my the business time of actually working my business is not this. This is me reminding myself what I need to be doing so I can actually go do it. So do you have a time plan today to go do the things that Jen talked about, to do the things that you're being called to right now, to do the thing you're in your head, you're like, I know I need to be doing whatever that is that needs to be your priority today. The thing that you're saying, I know I need to be doing blank. Mine is reaching back out to every single name in my black box. I literally wrote it down. I need to be, I need to reach back. I just need to start at the beginning. I try to over-organize, try to over plan, try to whatever. I just need to start having the conversations. Are you having conversations with people or are you letting your team do the business and you cash a paycheck? Just- yeah going to ask some hard questions. Yeah, that's good. Um, Emily Gibson had done a video. I think it was Andrea that sent it to me. And in it, she was saying like, I would rather you not do team calls. And I would rather you talk to one of your new VIPs and get them to help you get access to their friends through like getting them to do a new post, like, like a share their first post. She was like, I'd rather you, instead of a team call, you know, ask your VIP, can you and I host a sip and see in person together? And then when you meet with all of those people at the sip and see, ask them, Hey, what if you did a post right now about how you're sipping, you're trying this pink drink, just talking about how really, because those are the things that grow your individual business. Um, the heart of leadership and network marketing is being willing to do the things that make you feel uncomfortable. And I'm just going to say, I believe most of you guys are uncomfortable with du uh, duplication and development. You can probably recruit. And I bet a lot of you guys recruit from the products. Like, honestly, sleep gummies, potentially one of the easiest things I've ever sold. Hey, would you like to spend $24 and sleep better? Yes, I would. Here you go. But what are you actually going, hey, but I want you to join the sleep challenge. And then at the end, I want you to share your results on social media. And I want you to tag me. 
And I want you to have a call to action at the end of the post, like who needs this, who needs accountability with your health. That's where I would encourage y'all, you've got to get uncomfortable. And I'm just calling it out because I, I, I'm one of your diamond leaders. And if I struggle with it, I really think you struggle with it. So are you willing to get uncomfortable? Uncomfortable action really gets the needle moving. And it, it does, it's not a one-time thing. It's like getting uncomfortable every day. So not just falling up with your VIPs. Are you liking the products? But being like, hey, what would it take for you to share a post about these results that you're telling me about? Um, I just want to encourage you guys with that. Get uncomfortable. If you're comfortable, I'm just going to say it boldly. Your business is not in growth. I know it's not. I know that everyone in growth right now is has gotten themselves into a place where they're like, oh, this is a lot. And I know that feeling because again, I think you heard me say, I got three kids at home and I'm a work at home mom. And there are times where I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, why did I schedule that call on a Saturday morning? Why did I schedule that 8.30 call? And I have learned to be like, you know what, Lord, thank you for this because when my business has been really quiet, there's been none of this. And I had all the time in the world to watch TV <laughs> or you know, all the time in the world to stay up late at night and do my own thing. And and that's not the season. And I'm grateful. So I want to tell you, get uncomfortable. It will do amazing things for your business. I promise you will end up feeling so much gratitude about it. So, um, okay. Any questions? Cause if you guys have questions or if you need some coaching, we want to help you. Yes, Christy. Okay. So I will say that I have every day been doing things uncomfortable, like I, every day I've been sweating and I know that's so when proud I'm, doing, I'm so proud of you you will challenge me to do more business so I haven't even talked too much about product with people it's I've been just talking business and I know eventually that's gonna there's gonna be fruit to that but where I'm finding where I'm stuck and where I do the verbal vomit is vision casting um and I know it's individual kind of like on the person it's kind of like I do see things, but I'm an Enneagram one. So I see things black and white. I'm like, how can you not see this? Like, do you, you know, I just want to like shake the person, but I, um, what are ways to make it simple? Um, and where I'm not just vomiting on them. Yeah, that's a great question. And I want to just tell you vulnerably that that was one of my biggest convictions at convention was and I, I think I told Andrea that I've I, my my goal this summer is to come home and work on vision casting for myself first, because I can't vision cast for you if I haven't really sat down. And I mean, for me, I spent time with the Lord this morning. I was like, Lord, show me the vision. Like I need it because if He tells me, then I will be able to go forth in confidence. It won't feel like something I'm manifesting. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, so I would say that's one, like it's your own, you cannot cast a vision for someone else. That's bigger than your own. I can say to someone, you are totally diamond material, but if I don't really believe that I'm diamond material, like, tell me how that works. So that's, that's something that I would say, keep working on that Christy. And I know you are, because I had that great conversation with you, um, at the taco place, but so start there. Pray about your business, ask the Lord for vision. And then the second thing is, is I really think people want to be asked questions. Um, Andrea is a really good question asker and she's like not afraid to just ask people questions. And I'm like, how do they feel about that? And she's like, tell me this. So I would just keep asking them questions because as you do, and as they share, like, where they are and their thoughts, most likely they're going to share their objections to network marketing and to the business opportunity. And then what you can do is, first of all, when people give you objections, you got to hold on to yourself. It's not about you. Their objections are about them. And I had about a thousand objections when I first started network marketing. So if you can kind of hold on to yourself and then what you can do instead of instead of answering those objections is that's when you start to cast vision. You know, if you're talking to someone who's getting ready to send a student, send one of their kids to uh, college 
or needs to buy a car for their adolescent, you know, and they're telling you why they've got to work. They've got this job doing whatever, and they don't have time. And that's where you can talk about, but what if you did something in the evenings or even in the morning or, you know, whenever your lunch hour is, i always think about Ellen Ford's story. What if during your lunch hour, you were literally able to create an income that paid for your teenager's car next year? What if you were able to create an income that earned an extra thousand dollars a month that you just funneled straight into your kid's college account or your retirement account? And that's where the vision starts. That's actually a pretty small level vision. Guys, if you can't cast a vision for someone on how they can make $500 their first month, then I'm going to challenge you that you don't understand our compensation plan and you don't understand our fast start bonuses. Very simple. I'm not going to tell you how. You need to go check out our compensation plan and our fast start bonuses to see how you can promise someone that you can help them make $500 if they will do what you tell them to do. So if you can cast a vision for $500 a month and they're open and, and you can say to them, listen, if you're really willing to do what I ask you to do, we're going to make this happen. I promise you, that's where their vision begins to kick in. And then you can continue to vision cast with them. I just had someone go fast start gold over the weekend. She's a pastor's wife. She and, and she's a pastor's wife and a pastor. Like she and her husband started a church in their home 14 years ago. And so their lives are completely full-time ministry, but she has like a 25 hour a week job. And she just may, like in her first two months, I think each month she's made, I think her first month she made 850. This month she'll make like about $1,200. That's massive. Now, I had, to, she's still getting the vision. Like I'm trying to get her to see, well, what if you were able to eventually retire from this part-time job and this plexus business was what was not only paying you that money, but more. But if you can learn to do that with people and you know what you're going to tell them to do, you're obviously going to help them create their first post, create their list of 20, the first 20 people that they want on, on their team. Who can they help go silver? And how would you do that? How would you host a 30 minute messenger event? How would you host a sip and see in their home? These kinds of things get them into action, and that's what earns them money. So that's what I mean when I talk about vision. That I mean, if you can start with a $500 vision for someone, and then you can really, as, as you include them in the community and get them trained, you help them see that diamond's possible. As long as you're building belief and vision for diamond for yourself. I'm curious how many people, Christy, do you think you can actually help someone make 500? Like, do you think you can promise them if you do what I tell you to do, I can help you make $500 a month? Yeah, I believe that. They okay. just have to be willing to do it. Yes. But here's, here's the key to that. More people at the same time having the same conversation. So here's what I would really say. If you have five people, three people that you're having that same conversation with this month in June, the chances that you will develop a silver or higher than if you have one girl, you know, Amy is amazing. She's so good. She's going to be, a, she's an influencer. She could totally go diamond if she would just catch the vision. So you just keep pouring nuggets into Amy. But if you have Amy, Beth and Claire, and you're pouring nuggets into all of them at the same time, when one of them starts to move, you get more belief that you can help the other one move. When one has objections and you help them overcome an objection, then you feel better about overcoming an objection over here that's different. The more moving people you have actually creates your belief that you can do the next thing. One thing I will say is if you right now think you can't, there's no way I can promise someone I can help them make it $500 because I don't know what to tell them to do, then you need to sit down and figure out what that looks like. You actually need to figure out, okay, if Amy says, yeah, I'm all in, how do I make $500? What's the first thing I'm going to have Amy do? Uh, and if you don't know what that is, it's, it's, it's just your brain playing tricks on you. Cause you do know what it is. Cause you know what you did. So just help them to the next thing. All you have to do is help them go silver in their first month of being a brand ambassador. And you are well on your way because then all you have to do is go, Amy, all you have to do is tell your three people the exact same thing I did. 
And maybe, maybe it's one catches it and the other two don't, and that's fine. But the biggest thing is, are you having the conversation and are you asking the questions? Because I would say there's a really good chance you're probably not having that conversation and you're probably not asking curiosity questions or you're asking questions to get the answer you want instead of an answer that actually is like, I'm going to ask this question and I just want them the same way that like Jenny or Beck or I will ask y'all questions like, hey, what's the thing that's kind of holding you back? And you're like, I don't know. And the more we talk, you're like, "Mm, yeah, it's that. It's that one thing. So I just want to say, are you having Christy, Christy, like I'm watching like your faces like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The more people you are having the, hey, what would $500 look like for you right now? Hey, if I could give you simple steps, not easy steps, simple steps that you could do on a daily basis, I walk this right alongside you. I give you words to say or pictures to use, or we kind of come up with stuff together on a daily basis. And I show you how to get in conversation with people. People are not going to buy from your customers' posts. I just want to clarify for y'all. If you're having someone post and having them put their link in there, the entire world is in an is in a uh, affiliate marketing conversation right now. Like I cannot open Instagram without being sold on a vest, a pair of jeans, a new pair of shoes, um, a new um, shower head that I just put in my shower because Instagram told me to. Um, so, but do y'all know how many times I have to see that same thing over and over or have a conversation with my sister? Did you buy this? What do you think about this? Like all of those things are happening. So you need to help your your new VIP post so they can get in conversation with people. And then those conversations are actually where you're going to help them. You're going to say, Hey, when your sister gets in a con- ask you about Plexus, say, Hey, can my friend Christy join this conversation? Cause you know, I don't have any answers but she's going to have some answers for us both. And I think you being comfortable with that next step. Are you comfortable? Everybody on this that's listening right now, are you comfortable if someone says, yeah, I'm in, show me how to make $500 with what the next step is. And if you don't know what that next step is, then you need to message your sponsor and be like, hey, I got to this point, but I don't know what my next step is. Hey, I feel stuck here. Can you walk me through like my next two or three steps? And by the way, if you're a sponsor, which everybody on this call sponsored somebody and you're not, and you need to be able to help them get to their next step. So you need to be available as a sponsor for someone to message you and say, Hey, okay, I got them to post and I got them in a conversation, but then their person asked me this and I don't know what to do. Okay, great. Let's, does that make sense? Like you're coaching people while you're doing your own business at the same time. So curiosity will, will cure so many things in conversation. McKee? Yes. yes. Go for it. I have a couple of things really quick. So first thing that I noticed about myself being at convention was first the vision for myself, but then also my ability to communicate with people. Like I can talk and I can comment and say how cute your kids are. And oh my gosh, that's a good idea. But I have a hard time like connecting with people. Like there are some that come so easy, right? I mean, there really are. Then there's some that you really do feel like you have to work at it. So yesterday I went to the bookstore and I was looking through John Maxwell's books and he had this one that I hadn't heard of. It's everyone communicates, few connect what the most effective people do differently. And I started it last night and it is so good. So if you're like me and just need to work on the connecting part, this has been a good one so far. And then my second thing really quick, I just signed a girl last night. She, and it was through a reach out. I just reached out to her. She is a, um, and she's an instructor and the owner of a Pilates studio here in town. And I, this is where my thought is she doesn't need the money. And so how do I approach that if someone doesn't need the money? And I know that's so dumb to think that way, but I I just, anyways, what are, what do you think? (laughs) And Andrea, I remember your story. You joined because you love the trips and Alice loves trips. They're always going to like Prague and they just got, I mean, they're always traveling and she is the Instagram, like posing and all the things. So yeah. Kristen, I I, I just, 
I got to tell you, nobody needs money more than entrepreneurs. I know. <laughs> I'm so dead serious. You know, I, I owned a, a company and, you know, made almost $200 an hour with my clients and saw 30 clients a week and I needed money so bad. I just didn't want anyone to think that about me. Um, really quick. I, I love the fact that you said, uh, Andrea, I remember your story. And so that's the thing is like, you got to get to know her well enough to know her felt need. And that just comes, which look how the Lord set it up where you're already reading this Maxwell book. Yeah. Just connect with her, hear what she needs. Uh, you know what else a lot of people are looking for? And I'm curious how many of you guys would say this. I didn't know how much I needed something new to be good at. Granted, I was not good at it when I started, but the very first time that Andrea posted on Facebook in the double diamond destination team page that we used to all be a part of, she posted a tacky, we, all we had, you know, in 2014 was, were like tacky graphics and it was like, Becky went silver and that praise, I, I was like, I did not know how bad I needed and wanted that. So that's small, but I always say like, I should be the person like with the cardboard box that says we'll work for praise. So people have different felt needs and some, for some people it's earning an income for other people, it's community um, for other people. It's being, being good at something and being praised for it publicly, you know, like words of affirmation and for others, it's, you know, fun being able or, or for someone else, it might be the ability to help people. Or for a lot of moms with little babies, it's adult relationships where someone is not dependent on me. So just, I would say, talk to her and find out what her felt needs are and kind of try to speak to them all. Andrea, any thoughts or anybody else have any insight? Well, my first thought is everybody needs money. I mean, I, I just think we, I mean, I was, I just put the chat, like Jen Hawkins is still working her business. Like Celeste is still working her business. Like, and they make like multiple times what, what I make in a month. And like, they're still seeing the value of it. I think everybody needs retirement. Everybody wants a bigger nest egg. Everybody wants to go on a, you know, a trip. And I mean, every single one of us, if you said, what's your dream trip? Like this last week, I read a book about that takes place on the Amalfi, Amalfi coast. Like, but I don't want to go like, you know, coach to Italy and then like stay at like the garden Inn, Amalfi coast. Like I want to go like first class. If I'm going to go to Italy, I want to go like all the way. Like that costs a lot of money. And you know, like everybody needs more money. I just don't know anybody that does it. I'm, I mean, we know NBA players that still have gigs now, even though they made so much money, they're still investing money. The Waltons, great example. Joe and I just drove by a bank the other day. The Waltons who own Walmart, not only got all of that money inherited, but they've gone out and like multiplied it like exponentially. Like imagine if she could take all the money that she's made through all of her entrepreneurship and she could double and triple that through residual income, which there are very few business structures out there that have residual income that are going to continue to pay her without her putting more effort in over the long haul. So I just think really talking up residual income on your, on your stories, talking up what entrepreneurship looks like on your stories. And then are, have you, have, has everyone on here, if you have one person on your prospecting list that you're like, she would love a trip. She would love that yacht trip. That would be her thing. Have you shared it on your stories? Are y'all, are y'all resharing anybody's fun? Because if you're not, the thing that got me was Roz shared Celeste's fun with me. I didn't know Celeste. She wasn't my friend. We weren't following each other on social, but Roz said, you need to go follow my friend Celeste. She's going to leaders retreat, which looking back on it, like, I just thought she's going on a trip with a bunch of girls and they're like having so much fun and they have like an eighties party in a hotel room. And that just looked like a blast. And then I saw the shopping spree. So who are you, who are you showing on your stories? That's one level or 10 levels above you. That's doing the fun things that Plexus allows them to do. Are you sharing mom stories? Are you sharing? Um, I mean, Fallon just went on the yacht trip with her kids. Like, how are you engaging her in Plexus outside of just you? 
everybody. I mean, Dave too, like Dave's got to go search for guy stories all the time. I can't imagine how hard that is, but he's getting to go, Hey, I get to highlight every man in this business and show people, this isn't just a women's industry. This is a, this is a men's business. This is residual income. You can work alongside a corporate American job and actually like provide long-term bigger than a 401k and a retirement plan. Like, I think, are you showing that? Are you showing other people's stories to your audience? Because I would just guess, Kristen, that she may not see herself in your story right now if y'all don't have similar lifestyles, but she may see herself in someone else's story. So go find someone that you just enjoy following too, that you think she'd enjoy following. Start sharing those stories in your stories and tell people, go follow. I told everyone, go follow my friend Melissa while she's on her yacht. Go follow my friend Fallon while she's on her yacht trip. I think Emily Gibson's going on hers in August. Like go follow, like as soon as you see that pop up in your stories, if you're interested in it, go share it with your audience because your audience is going to be interested in it too. Okay. It's right at one o'clock. I hope all of y'all feel like you have something on your activities list. that's for you growing your business today. I hope you put something down and you're commit to yourself in your own business before the day is over. And we will see y'all tomorrow night on meet plexus. Uh, we'll put it in, uh, in on the table today so that you have something to invite them to over the next 24 hours. We'll talk to y'all later. Hi, Russ.